Hello and welcome to the latest from Hearts Standard. My name is Joel Sked and on this occasion I am joined by James Kearney as we look to go, not look to, we will go over Hartford Lovian's 4-2 win over Livingston in the Scottish Premiership at the weekend. It was the final fixture before the split. Before we get into it, James, how are you doing? I'm um, very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good, good, good. There's I think there's, there's going to be plenty to get into uh, yeah. from, the, from the game the weekend. But of course, before we do any of that, James, before we mm. do any of that, we will hear from our sponsors who are, as those who listen or watch us know, our Wiesmann, renowned for their exceptional German engineering, as a leader. They are a leader, sorry in the boiler industry worldwide. They've now partnered with Scotland's own award-winning installation team, MPH Boilers, for a collaboration that is a match made in Scotland. When it comes to heating, Wiesman Boilers stand out with efficiency and reliability, thanks to their advanced technology. And with the local expertise of MPH Boilers, you're guaranteed top-tier installation and service. Together, they're offering an unbeatable deal, a free internet controller with every Wiesman Boiler, making it effortless to control your heating. Plus, they're throwing in the first year's service for free, ensuring your peace of mind. If you've been thinking about upgrading your boiler, there's never been a better opportunity. With Faceman's world-class engineering and MPH Boilers award-winning service, your home heating is in the best hands. Faceman and MPH Boilers, yep, it is a match made in Scotland. Don't wait until it's too cold. Check them out today and step into a warmer, more efficient home. Now... Uh, Grant asks, I need a new boiler. Any recommendations? Of course, we've only got one recommendation. <laughs> Moving on to the look at the, the the game from the weekend. James, you watched it back yesterday. You've got a piece going up on the site tomorrow. You've already got a piece up on the site today, just looking at Cami Devlin's goal, which we will get into later on. But on your watch back briefly, what what were your what was your big takeaway from uh, from the rewatch? Um, well, I don't mean to undermine the, the title of this episode but I don't think it was the worst 22 minute spell of the season I think that's playing out a bit of much I, okay I get, that's that's good to know like, that's good to it, know. Was, it wasn't great don't get me wrong but like you know first 20 minutes of the second half of the league cup for instance that was, that was a pretty bad 22 minutes like <laughs> I don't know like yeah I, I, but anyway um, Look, it's, I'm glad you said because my first my first question was going to be was that the worst 22 minutes of Football this season, and just it's just because it was against the team bottom of the league. I don't know if there's, I don't yeah. know if there was just a, I don't know if there was just a shock factor that maybe was involved in that. But it just seemed to everything that we tried to do just didn't seem to go right. Just just seemed to be very slow out the traps, and like Livingston were far more aggressive, far far more alert than the Hearts. The, essentially, what needed looked like Hearts needed a wake up call, and uh, they they got to. Yes, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, take nothing away from Livingston. I thought, open 20 minutes, they were great. You know, they were. They yeah, were yeah. Um, and, the, you know, like we talked about in the preview show, how we thought, oh, Joe, I, I, I thought stupidly it would be, oh, a KG won a win, you know, very similar to the game back in November. Obviously, it's absolutely nothing like that. You know, yeah, yeah. Enough. But, you know, I thought that Livingston were good value for the lead when they got it. I mean, obviously, both goals were fairly opportunistic and both were preventable from a heart's perspective of course um obviously the first one Gordon comes out and plays it just kind of straight to Kelly and don't get me wrong brilliant finish from Kelly of course I think it's the first time it's absolutely fantastic but I mean it's not a, you know from a, it's, it's entirely preventable I think and then when you look at the second goal again uh Kent as we all know doesn't really cover himself in glory there I uh, had a couple of ropey moments in this game I, th I thought early on um but to much, like you say after that it kind of is as if hearts were like, I don't think anything fundamentally changed in terms of the way they were playing or the way they were set up or the tactics or anything like that. And it's something Ken Naismith alluded to as well in the post-match press conference. It was just more that, um, you know, because of the way Livingston pressed so aggressively, like there's going to be a, a spare man somewhere. And the idea is, you know, just work the ball to him, find him and get it, get it to him. And that's kind of what I think happened eventually. You know, it's like when Hearts started playing, you know, there was that... I mean, if you look at the first goal, for instance, it's obviously, you know, it's a great assist from Shankland. And obviously, he does it like, he does it again <laughs> two minutes later. But I think that, that that was a goal, it was kind of coming at times, you know, I think particularly with the way that you had Barry Mackay on the left hand side was dropping deep and uh, getting on the ball. You had Oda on the right hand side pushing up and getting forward. There was this kind of 
um, there was a, there was quite a nice balance to the team, particularly when Cochrane was getting forward as well. I thought him and Mackay linked up really well um, on the, down the left hand side. So I think that there were positives in, the, in that in those opening stages, but it's just a case of just you know they just needed one kind of attack and move to come off, and then once it did, there was that just that glorious was it 15, 16 minute spell, what we call it, uh, you know, where Hearts go from 2-0 down to 4-2 up. So I think that, yeah, it, it was a case of just not panicking. I think mainly when, after going two goals down, I think that's something Naismith alluded to as well, is the fact that they just kind of had to keep doing what they were doing, you know, trust that you know, they've got the better, more technical players, and that if you play better football, you, you, you the, result, the chances will come. And when the chances did come, you know, they were as good as chances you could possibly hope for. Obviously, the first three goals are all very similar in terms of the actual uh, you know, balls across the goal, base of goal and the finish. Then you've got a penalty. And that helped, you know, it, it helped Hearts record for you know, the stats nerds, all the stats nerds out there. The um, the win against Livingston, that was the highest XG that Hearts had recorded in a league game under Stephen Nason. I think that's 3.5 or something like that. They were thereabouts off the top of my head. So, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the chances Hearts created, you know, you could, you could hardly miss them. But I think that, though, that, though, that you kind of got the feeling that even when Hearts were down, that they were just kind of one passing move away from being able to kind of play straight through Livingston. And we saw it happen time and again. Um, but I guess the one thing I would say is that two of the goals from a Livingston perspective are entirely preventable. I mean, the second goal, you have to pull over the top, Obelai just misses it and then Shank comes through. That's not great. And then obviously the goal, um, the penalty as well, when Oda gets yeah. brought down. I mean, yeah, it's just a crazy, crazy decision to head it back to the goal at that point. I think just, Martin Dale afterwards said that uh, Livingston gifted Hearts two goals. And uh, but I think it's also, you can flip it the other way, Hearts gifted Livingston two goals mm. with uh, some of the sloppy play, sloppy, sloppy play to get to begin with. I mean, two positives for me on like the collective before we get into talking about individuals from the game. In that, f- firstly, the, you, you talked about the goals and the, the, the creation of chances. That's first time Hearts was regularly creating, well, certainly in that spell, really, really good chances. You, you mentioned it in your your piece yesterday on the site, looking at the, uh, the data, that a lot of the um, three of the goals, all, all four of the goals, you count the penalty, all came from between the posts, as between the posts, 12 yards in, three of them like in the six yard box. Yeah. These are exactly the areas you want to create chances. And we did that. The. Um, the fact that they were attacking the six yard box as well was uh, was 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 really positive. That you've not just it's not just Shanklin there. That Shanklin obviously will come and talk his performance, but when he vacated it, you had Oda in there, you had Grant in there, you had Cami Devlin attacking it, and Naismith again afterwards said that's what he wants from the team is to get the not just get the ball in that area, but get bodies in there to support it. I thought that was a real positive from the the game on on Saturday game. The first time in the league we scored four goals this season. Secondly, when we went 2 0 down, wasn't yes, I was a wee bit concerned, but there's st- mm. my kind of first thought was there's still over an hour for Hearts to bring this back. That there's uh, we've done it before against Ross County, even though it will all be a draw, and we've done it against Dundee, and there was a, a trust in the team that they could. Get something out of this game, not just coming back to draw, but to win as well. No, definitely, and I think that <clears throat> I mean because like, you think even the when that opening twenty minutes or so when Hearts were, just, when were losing, you know some players, you know the players are still looking good. I mean, like I said, George, I think George Grant still was really tidy. I thought he had a, a really solid game again on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly after watching it back, this again really tidy. They really helped kind of stitching things together in the middle of the park. Um, I thought Oda um, looked quite strong as well from the start. He was really good at kind of stretching the lines and. Particularly even um, kind of chasing after lost causes, which you know gets some, which wins the penalty for Hearts later on in the game. Um, it makes sure he's there, following in for Shankland as well, and uh, for the for the equaliser. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, the other, the other players as well, who I think caught my eye quite early on was Barry Mackay, who, like we, I kind of touched on earlier, but I think the way that with when Cochrane kind of advanced forward, it allowed Mackay to get on the ball, touch inside, get on his right foot, <coughs> and. There were a couple of moments early on where he kind of tried these, you know, he kind of cut inside, tried the Hollywood ball and didn't quite come off, but you could see what he was going for. 
and then eventually, of course, it does come off um, in the build-up to the first goal. And he's obviously incredibly, he's really heavily involved in the third goal as well. Again, a really incisive pass that just takes out the entire Livingston midfield. And I think that this is something that um, we, me and Tom discussed on the previous show on Friday was that, you know, when you're looking at a game like this and you're looking at someone who's going to kind of produce that little moment of magic when things are congested and they're tight, Barry McKay is absolutely capable of that. And that's what he showed <clears throat> in kind of clutch moments, I suppose. And I think that that's just really great to see for Hearts fans because we all know how good a player he is and we know how much talent he's got. But we know he's also missed an awful lot of football. So to see him come back in and to bring that kind of creative spark, it's first off just nice to see him getting back to what you know he, what we know he can do. But secondly, as well, it's also just it's also very pleasing to see because it's been something that has been missing for large chunks of the season. Let's be honest. Yeah, we we've talked about it in the Vargas Forest Oda, who we can come on to talk about shortly. They are they offer a lot of quality. A quality and qualities, but they don't offer what Barry McKay does, and there's not really anyone that in the squad that does replicate Barry McKay. George Grant is the, the closest, but they're two very different players, mm. uh, two two very different uh, creative uh, creative players. And I just thought that you just saw signs of kind of Barry McKay at his peak in a Hearts jersey, just the way he was collecting the ball out left, moving, kind of just attracting players towards him, opening up space for teammates seeing passes or being able to execute passes that other players maybe uh, don't see or don't have the uh, well it's a confidence or the skill set to uh, to spot them like the like the pass you said in the third goal to take out the level midfield or the outside of the uh, ball foot to take out a couple of players to find it into uh, to get it into Shankland mm -hmm. it just it just adds it adds so much more um and so much more What's 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 the what's the word? Just um, it just adds another facet to Hearts' attack and play, which at times has been has been missing this season. The good thing is, is that you look at it. Uh, there was times last season where Hearts were quite reliant on Barry McKay at times to create the season before, whereas now he just uh, alongside Grant, alongside Oda, alongside Vargas, alongside Forrest, he just adds to that rather than having to take on the. Burden, and that's the hope is that he's coming in and again just bringing a bit more uh, depth and just something different to them. Uh, the the final third. No, absolutely. I mean, because I think as well when you when you think of like um right now, kind of like Hearts is like strongest eleven on paper. I suppose you know, would Barry McKay even get into it? I mean, you know, we always rave, rave about Alan Forrest pretty much every week. Mm. We take him as squad form, so do you, like. I think that that was I just, one of the really what, impressive what, aspects of Saturday, though, was just the fact that I mean, for me, the two standout players, aside from probably Shankland, were Oda and Mackay. Mm -hmm. And these are guys who are, you know, they've been playing second fiddle to Vargas and Forrest for a lot of the season and certainly a lot recently as well. And yet they come in and they were both absolutely fantastic. And again, so it just gives you, like you say, it gives you all these different options in that final third. Um, you know, and it's, it's very much that case where you've got different players who are going to be better for different games than others. Yeah. But they are four quite distinct attacking options now that can play on the wings. Most of them can kind of play either wing as well, to be honest. And it just, again, it, it just gives Naismith that tactical flexibility to attack teams in different ways. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And I think that was the question you asked about Mackay in the strongest 11. I, my answer would be depends what the mm. game is, depends what the formation is. But if you're if you're playing like a a, a front four or kind of four two three one, I do think he provides balance within that. If you've got someone like Vargas or Forrest or Oda on the other side, or if you've got Grant in, in behind. In terms of in terms of Oda, I was really really encouraged with his performance. I know. The Mackay and Oda are the focus of your article tomorrow, so you might be able to go into a wee bit more depth, but sometimes this season, I think we've been critical of Oda for not being as direct as he should be, for sometimes taking the safe option, but mm -hmm. we saw, especially out out of possession, he was really direct, he was really um, and he was asking questions of Livingston, he was really positive with his running, you've seen it with him getting across his marker to score the goal, you've seen it the way he reacted to win the penalty, and I think in, in your article you pointed out that it, 
early on, he pressed Livingston and forced him into a loose pass, which won a corner. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was like, I think it's only a minute or two into the game. And it's, I think it's just a nice early indication of the kind of um, drive and application that he was playing with on, on Saturday. Like, you know, like I said, he was chasing what was quite clearly a lost ball, like a lost cause the entire time. You know, it's a long ball up from Kent. It's going absolutely nowhere. And to be fair, I think the Levy, <clears throat> the Levy defender probably, you know, makes a bit of a meal of the pass back. Like, it's a bad yeah. pass. He should play earlier and all the rest of it, fine. But the point is, you know, Oda's there pressed him. If he doesn't do that, the Hearts don't get the corner. Again, there's another chance later on in the first half. I think this is a 1-0 down when Oda gets the ball out on the right-hand side. Um, you know, plays, links up well with Grant, gets in, tries to hit his cross. Cross gets blocked, goes fine for a corner. So, again, he's won a corner, which is great. But then I think if <clears throat> I didn't really notice it at the time, it's only when the, well, certainly when you watch it back, when the camera kind of pans out, then you notice Barry Mackay is just completely unmarked at the far post. So obviously, you know, he's trying to hit him. But I, I just thought that he did that kind of throughout the game. He was always kind of running in behind, being direct, you know, basically asking the question, you know, and then, mm-hmm. like, and then he got, like you say, he got his rewards for it, you know. Uh, I think for Shankland's go- uh, for the equaliser of the second goal, when, you know, when Shankland gets the ball, when he re- and Oda realises, oh, Shankland's in here, you know, like the Livingston defender who's his man, he's got maybe a five, 10 yard head start on him. And Oda's basically standing still to begin with because he doesn't anticipate the ball clearing the defence, obviously. When it does, you know, he, he shows great speed, great determination to get there first, get in the box, and he's always going to win the ball when Shankland drove it across. And then equally for the pen, for the uh, the penalty as well, again, it's like it's when the ball's looked up high in the air and the Levy's defender, I think it's Mikey Devlin's underneath it, and you see Devlin's is up just staring at it the whole time. He's not even looking around at what's going on yeah. or anything. And that's the point where Oda starts going because you can watch him. He's just kind of standing around, standing around, kind of jogging a little bit. Then as soon as you see the, he sees the defenders not even looking at what's what's going on around them, starts charging towards the ball. He's also noticed Shamal George is like should be way further out off his line. I don't know why he's kind of rooted to his goal line for some reason. Um, and then he's just able to nip in and take advantage. And again, it's very similar to that one um, at Rugby Park earlier in the season. Actually, I thought um, the one that. Wasn't given, was it? Yeah, well, Dennis should have been sent off, but wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Oda got booked for it, didn't he? No, no, but yeah, Dennis, be... I'm sure Dennis got booked for it. Was it? Oh, I can't remember now. It was, but yeah, it was a very... There's some very... controversy around that, I remember yeah, that much. There was, it was a very, very strange incident which went to VAR then for something and then went to VAR for something else, yeah. It was it was, it was a bizarre one. Mm. So, yeah, I can't remember any about that, but again, I just thought that that kind of typified this afternoon and... Um, you know, neither neither of them lasted the full night. That wasn't going to happen. You know, I think Mackay came off around about sixty minutes or so. But I think the most important thing was it was a good sixty minutes he caught. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, like you say, it's, it, right now the challenge for him is just to you know get back into the team, get contributing. But it doesn't necessarily mean playing every minute of every game, becoming you know the guy in the base of midfield that everything revolves around. That'll take time. But the most important thing just now is try and get back to some of those levels. That he was hitting during his peak, and I think we did see one or two wee glimpses of that on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. I think that for, for, for both of them, as uh, both of them were uh, really positive signs, as it was with George Grant. You mentioned him earlier on. Uh, just touched on him very, very quickly. I think he just he, he's someone who has over the season probably gone under the radar in terms of how important he has been to the team. I think it's just it's that kind of productivity that you want to back up what he does with the ball. Without the ball, you want him to score a bit more goals. You want him to create a wee bit more. And I thought his goal was excellent watching it back. Realised just how good his movement was of recognising where the danger, where, where the threat was going to be, uh, go or where he had to be to be in the mm-hmm. best position to score. And he, he did really well to get away from the defender. And I remember when he first signed for Hearts, I watched him. I watched a lot of clips of him from down uh, down south when he had a really good se- goal scoring season with. I think it was maybe Notts County and Stephen had had two. Uh, I might be getting the names wrong. Uh, they all blended the one down there, uh, uh, no leagues and uh, down south. But I do remember that he was. Those were the type of decisions and runs he was making when he was scoring when he was mm. scoring goals. And yes, he scored quite a few penalties down south, and we've seen how good he is from the penalty spot up here. But the from open play, these were the. These are the type of runs he was making. And he's got good kick technique as well when the ball falls to him in the box and around the box. And I just think he's I think he's a very smart, I think he's a very intelligent player. 
I just think for him to win over more fans, for him to be uh, probably more appreciated, is to produce more cons- uh, consistently. That's that's the case because Hearts fans have seen flashes, glimpses of that talent, but it's just not being produced. Like when we spoke to uh, Naismith, when he talked about nearly moments, there's been too many mm. of that that he needs to kind of turn him around. And if you can have more performances like Saturday and score from open play, that'll be massive in changing the view on him. Uh, absolutely. I mean, he's because I know that, like, on, on, certainly on Saturday, there's definitely a point where you could tell he was given a lot more attacking license. You know, there's times that almost like he was up front, basically yeah. alongside Shankland. You know, and I think that, you know, he was getting, he was making a nuisance, nuisance of himself and getting into good positions. And again, like at times, yeah, Hearts could have been maybe a little bit neater in and around the box. I mean, don't get me wrong, they still scored three fantastic goals, so it's hard to complain too much. But no, I mean, I, I, I do like Grant, and like you say, like, it's just because I, I think he's kind of caught in this cycle where he maybe has like two, three, maybe even four games where you go, oh, I thought Grant was really good today, really solid, you know, didn't really do much wrong. And then he'll maybe put in one showing where it's just he's a bit anonymous in the, in the nicest possible way. Like, you just, you know, you wouldn't, you don't really notice him. And again, it's just about trying to, you know, remove those games and keep the rest. Because like you say, like, inside is a great example. When he's playing well and you know, he does make the team around him better, you know, and I think he's he's really good at you know, he, he does treat the ball really carefully. Uh, he's he's one of the better passers in the squad, for instance. I think he does te- treat the ball well and he is moving it around and he's got that range of passing that for instance, you know, ben, I wouldn't say Ben has Ingen- got or even someone like Devlin or Newenhoff where they can to tend to make kind of shorter passes. He can kind of spread it around a wee bit, which is always great to have. So um yeah, no, I think I'll be to us. I'll be more interested to see how he gets on next week because I imagine him making an appearance at some point. I imagine he'll probably start because he tends to play in these big like games. James. Yeah, you know, like, which I think, <clears throat> which I think, to be honest, that says quite a lot as well. The fact that whenever these big games come around, you know, whether it's Celtic, Rangers, you know, European games, Grant's normally starting, normally playing quite an important role. So I think that that says a lot about his kind of his technique, his natural ability and, you know, what he's able to bring to the, the kind of maturity he brings to the midfield in these big games. I want to change pace a little. I still want to ask you about the, about Gordon, about Shanklin, about Devlin, but before we do, uh, Kev Mack in the chat asks, uh, thoughts on Tagawa? I really hope he comes good. Graham Duffy, I think all the fans are desperate for Tagawa to do well. We're trying to find uh, find him on Saturday, but I just couldn't get that final pass. And uh, Richarlison, uh, hopefully it's the uh, Spurs player. Same, I loved uh, Tagawa. We spent uh, uh, spent too much and hyped to him much as well. Um, and uh, John Thompson, he's rated 50, uh, 50, 77 on my EAFC, so he must be great. I think that was that was kind of the story of the second half because I. Game did kind of peter out after London had a wee spell after the half. Tagawa came on. I think just the whole of Tyne Castle was willing him to get on the score sheet. The uh, Gorgi Ultras were obviously uh, leading, his, uh, leading, um, leading with his chant. And then there were a couple moments where the ball was put in his area. And there was another moment where Sh- uh, Shanklin tried to find them, but he didn't make the run. And Victor Shanklin was uh, frustrated. And it was just like, oh, just just score. Because I think Castle would have uh, would have um, erupted. Oh, yeah. You could, you could tell because, see, because obviously the way that the turnout had happened, the jeopardy had been removed from the game to an extent. The sun had started coming out. You know, uh, scores started filtering in from elsewhere. I'll maybe leave it at that. But you know, everyone, everyone was having a good yeah. time. It was a bit of a party atmosphere, and that would have been the cherry on top. You know, it, like you say, everyone was willing it. Everyone really wanted it to happen. I mean, um, I mean, you texted me as soon as it happened, <clears throat> as soon as Tagal came on, to basically just going like, "This is it. This is the day. This is the day, <laughs> surely." Because L- Livingston were also playing with that system, which actually, you know. So if you're running behind, you might get you might get a chance here. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few games that actually suits them. So, yeah, <clears throat> no, it, it was a shame. Um, I, I'd still like to think that you know, go away over the summer, wipe the slate clean, start again, see how he gets on. I, I'm not prepared to write him off yet because, like you say, there's a lot of there's a lot of goodwill there, and I think I, I'm I'm convinced there's a good player in there. I think you know, um, particularly. With Europe on the horizon next season as well, those are the kind of games where actually he might, you know, be a better fit tactically. Um, 
I, I guess one thing I'll quickly say as well, so, uh, John Thompson's point about he's rated 77 on EA. So I, I got a copy of that the other day because I'm very late at buying these things. And I decided to do a player career, you know, the one where you, you make a you make a guy and you just place that one player in the team. So I was like, all right, I'll go, I'll go to Hearts and I'll be, I'll, I'll be a number 10 because, you know, Hearts need a number 10. So that's what I'll be. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be great. I've got Lawrence Shankland up ahead of me. I'll just be slipping him in balls all the time. You know, I'm going to get a million assists. It's going to be great. I played one friendly and Shankland was sold. Raging. Now, now, oh. now, 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 now Tagama plays up front every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if, if there's anyone that's going to get a, a, a tune out of Tagama, it's going to be you. Uh, going to be you, James. Uh, going back to... Yeah, just on Tagawa. The amount of times I, uh, the amount that I've heard about his finishing and training is uh, makes him makes him as if he is one of the best finishers in the world. But we just need them to get uh, get them get those chances. Um, moving to back to kind of the start of the game, Gordon. We talked about how poor the the, the goals were that were given up from a collective hearts point of view. What did you make of Gordon's involvement in in, in both goals? Do you have sympathy, or do you think he was? Um, at fault for one or two, or played a part in one or two. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll, I'll be honest. I put the blame for the first goal at Gordon's door. I'll be honest. Um, I think uh, don't get me wrong. I don't think he's helped out by the defence kind of switching off when the long ball comes in initially. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it, that was very good. The second goal, could he do better? Probably. Yeah. Is that his? I'll, I'll give him a buy on that one though. Mm. I don't think that's the end of the world. I, um, I, I let's just hope. I mean, I don't, obviously we were surprised. When the team sheet came out and we saw he's not playing, or well, Clark's not playing and Gordon's in, and after I seen Naismith explained, the idea was well, you know, second final's coming up, want to give him a game first, so he's not going into it cold. And all he'd say is that well, let's hope that that's Gordon got the got that out of his system. Yes, you know, ahead of you know, what is a bigger game with all respect to Livingston. What's a bigger game of the weekend? I thought the I've got sympathy for it. yeah. So looking back, I think the 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 big one probably was the first goal and the fact that he came out afterwards and spoke in the press and he talked about how it was a right decision but the execution wasn't right for what he did and I had sympathy for him because he read the through ball really well I he got there and he did did have to come it was awkward for him it was just an awkward tight so it was it was almost like it looked like at times he was at the, from one end it looked like he was trying to control it and then it, sorry it looked like he was in between caught in between trying to control it and trying to clear it and then mm. it was it just looked like um half-hearted effort but the way the ball bounced i just thought it was a a really awkward ball to deal with because he was having to control it at quite a height so he couldn't get any purchase uh behind it and clear it so he but i think he put it into a decent area because it was out wide it wasn't central but mm. it was just a fact that the, the one player in the Livingston team you didn't want to follow to was Stephen Kelly, who's got fantastic ability from certainly like kind of long range and got good technique. Next, we've talked about reacting. So, yeah, I think that one. I think this the second goal, I don't think it went in an ideal position in his goal. I think I just goalkeepers don't like to be beat at what is their, their, their front mm. post. But I thought Kelly used uh, used his eyes well used the angles well and it was a really well well struck uh, shot but yeah like you said hopefully that's um that's just uh that's any any mistakes within there were uh were out his system and he's uh back to his very best on sunday because i think he probably will have to be uh for yeah I, I imagine he'll be kept busy for sure um although you know i don't know i, I watched some of the rangers game yesterday and like, oh, John, I'm not going to say anything. John, I'm no, not, no, I'm not, no, no, no. Yeah, not yeah. Well, let, let's move on. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge later on in the week. Two more players I want to uh, talk about before we kind of finish up, and that is uh, first is Lauren Shanklin. I thought uh, I would, I would, push, uh, I would um, suggest anyone go and read James's uh, stats bomb report. It was yesterday. It's on the on the front of the site, and right at the end, you kind of uh, shoot showcased some key numbers for Shankland and we saw him he didn't get too many scoring positions he obviously got uh, got the penalty but he was uh, um, fantastic in a creative sense and we know that we know he has that about him because last last season he was at times the, be the team's best number 10 and best number 9 all rolled into one and just some of his his touches his awareness his vision was just out of this world and you look at the flick he played into the path of Cochrane for the third goal, and also 
the touch he took from Barney McKay's pass, and it was it was between his crotch and his knee, and he was still be able to, he was still able to control it perfectly, but in a direction that was going to help mm. him. Just uh, I just thought it was, it was on one of those days where okay, he might not have loads of chances or uh, score fantastic goals, but watching him was was a real joy. No, absolutely, and you know <clears throat> the performances like that. That's why when I look at Shankland, I go, he can play, in, you know, he can play international football, no bother. But yeah, he mm-hmm. can play for Scotland, yeah, he can play the Euros, yeah, it's fine. Because it's not, you know, people look at him and go, like, oh, okay, he's got, you know, 30 goals this season. All right, he's a goal scorer guy, that's his thing. You know, as if, like, as if he's somebody like, I don't know, with a great respect, someone like Chris Boyd, you know, absolutely wonderful goal scorer. But, you know, like, that's kind of all he does. And it's just still abundantly clear that's not what he does. You know, he's, he's got so much more to his game than that. Um, and I think that, you know, it's... it's Crosses about uh, for both assists were absolutely spot on. Um, it's actually interesting as well he hit the penalty because I assumed it would be Grant and Grant had the ball the ball to begin with. I think and then he gave mm. it to Shankland because um, obviously Grant's been penalty taker whenever Shankland's been on the park. Um, so that, that I guess that's maybe the end of that for for Grant. I thought that was a nice wee moment though. Um, but yeah, I, I thought he was just it's all around play. The way he was able to drop deep and get involved to build up. I mean, I think in the St. Mirren game, <clears throat> Hearts really missed that and it showed. I think he was really conspicuous by his yeah. absence. And then you look at a game like that where, you know, you've got Shankland back in the team, you've got Beningame back in the team. And there's a reason that Hearts ended up with an extra 20 odd percent possession. Like, obviously, it's different conditions, different opponent, and all that fine. But I think that, yeah, Shankland's just, particularly when Hearts are building out from the back and, you know, try, again, trying to find that loose man. If he's able to drop deep, he becomes that loose man. And when it, then when you play on the ball, he tends not to lose it either, and he can hold off like one, two players at, at a time as well. So, yeah, there's just another another brilliant performance for him. Um, and, yeah, the goal was deserved. He deserved a goal for that, for the way he played. And finally, what did you make of Cammy Devlin's performance? Oh, big fan. Yeah. I know, yeah. You know, you're a big fan. It's, and it's, I, I thought <clears> it, was, it was interesting that the reaction to... To um, Tom's piece during the week, his amount of a lot of the engagement we got was around Cami Devlin and just how I think genuinely I think he is very very well liked by uh, Hearts fans and all. There's there's always the debate around uh, his, his pass and what he did uh, brings to the team in possession, but you just watch him. He's just such an infectious personality, infectious character mm-hmm. who wants to who, who wants to do I'm, I'm, I'm going to compare him to a dog but I mean this in the nicest way possible he just wants to please, he just, just wants to please the fans, wants to please his teammates by the amount of running he does, the amount, mm-hmm. of, um, the amount of work he does, maybe sometimes there's too much but uh, I, I, yeah I thought he was, he thought it was really important in the t- intense intensity, tempo out of possession I kind of just getting the getting the team going when we were struggling early on. Yeah, no, he, you know, he it was his usual just energetic self in the middle, just an absolute, but you know, bundle just running around constantly, getting getting himself involved. You know, when heart when the momentum did swing Hearts his way and they started scoring goals towards the end of the first half, I mean, it was notable that it was a lot of time it was when Devon was getting further forward. But having said that, you know, he would get forward, he'd get into the box, try and you know do stuff. And he'd run all the way back as well and make sure he's like mm. last man when it came to like long balls forward and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it was a really good all round performance from him. Um, one thing I learned earlier though that this did surprise me because I mean, Devlin's what, 23, 24, something like that? Well, I think maybe 25 now, actually. 25. That's hard to think. He's got quite a boyish face, doesn't he? He's quite, yeah. quite useful looking. Um, he's, yeah, 25. He's 26 uh, in June. 26 in June. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You might have already, you might have read this already, but do you know how many goals he's got this in his career? Uh, yes, because I read your piece. Yeah, damn, I thought you did. Damn. Uh, no, <laughs> I won't leave the listeners in Jefferson. It's nine. He's only got nine. I, I, I might be wrong in that. Maybe, maybe perhaps I'm wrong. But as far as I can tell, he's got nine goals. Um, not just for Hearts. I mean, in total, full stop. I think that yeah. was a sixth goal for Hearts, which I thought was surprising. I mean, obviously, you know, that's not his game. He's not this number ten, but. I would have expected to be a little bit higher than that, I suppose. But again, we're starting, you know, I think that Devon's the, definitely the most natural kind of box-to-box player in that team. And, you know, like myself and Tom discussed at length on Friday, he's, you know, a sensation, he's absolutely sensational, like winning the ball back, it's off the ball stuff. 
and he's bet on the ball and people give him credit for as well. So really pleased for him. Um, I thought his tickets go well. Uh, bonus points for getting a nutmeg as well. That was nice. I mean, not by Jamal George, which I didn't realise until watching the replays of it. Um, also worth pointing out just um, that the XG for his chance was about 0.33, I think it was. Yeah, I noticed that. And then <clears throat> Grant was 0.75, Oda was 0.8 something or other. So that's just significantly lower, uh, basically just because you've got you know, George's in the way as well. And there was also though that one moment in the second half where he probably should have got a second goal. Whereas we kind of dinged the ball through to him and he kind of went sliding in and just poked, poked it wide. So, yeah, yeah, not, not much ever resumed after that, I suppose. But, um, yeah, no, a great, another really good performance from him. Um, and another one that just you know gives Naismith another selection headache going into Sunday, especially with Noon. Um, Noon off a doubt, hopefully, he's back, but we don't know, we can't say for sure. Um, but at least now, Hearts know that if if Noon Hoff can't make it. Devlin's more than capable and more than ready to get involved, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This it's, it's good the, the the options, the squad depth is is getting there towards the end of the season. Hopefully it it's, kind of stays that way going into next season. Just uh, just seen uh, John's uh, John John Thompson's question here. It's a very good question, and I'm not sure I've got an answer to it, but uh Everyone said Xander couldn't be dropped because he has done well. If Gordon has a great semi-final, can he be dropped? Serious question. That's uh, interested. I, I, I don't know. I think. I think that's a big. It'd be a big, big call. I don't know if it's a case of right. Maybe give Xander a couple of games, and then if if, if Gordon has a great game on Sunday, then it hopefully means. Hearts are into the final, and then if that's the case, you're probably just thinking, just keep him, keep, keep playing him, because if he's going to play the final, you may as well just get a run of mm. games for him. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. Um, I, I suppose that conversation's been had between you know Naismith and Clark and uh, Gordon. I'm sure they've all had this chat, but yeah, that's a very interesting point. Uh, yeah. Don't know, John, but yeah, good question. Hopefully, hopefully, because he has he's had such a good game and he's got hearts in the final. We'll, oh, I, uh, hopefully, we'll find out. Oh, ideally, we want him to do absolutely nothing all game. That, that'd be the perfect. Just take a few goal kicks, Grant. Yeah. I can't see that though. <laughs> we will leave it there. We kind of run out of time. Uh, just a couple of things I would want to bring. I want to bring up. Uh, first one is. Um, the win at the weekend confirmed Hearts will definitely be in Europe next season. Of course, can't finish any lower than fourth now, but the, obviously the aim is to be third. But it does mean that Hearts will have been uh, in Europe. It means Hearts have will, will partake in European uh, competition for three seasons in a row, the first time in the club's history. Um, quite a... Um, not the greatest stat, I don't think, especially Crazy. with... Uh, Considering St Johnston have, uh, have done at least four seasons in a row in in, in European competitions, so yeah, it's uh, it's I think it points to the the sheer inconsistency and underachievement at the club since 1960. <laughs> but at least it has been achieved. And the second thing I need to raise is we have got a subscription offer on at the moment, a spring sale at heartstandard.co.uk. You can subscribe for £1 for six months or £18 for 12 months. What that will do, well, obviously you get access to all our content, well, it's the app um, and all the written content, but you will be entered into the draw alongside all our current subscribers in, uh, for a chance to win one of two signed Hearts home kits signed by the full first team squad. So there is a nice wee potential um, gift if you are if your name's chosen out. I think it'll be at the end of the month. I am away on holiday very shortly, so um, I'm sure it'll get worked out one way or another. But yes, uh, please do if you've not subscribed, uh, think about it. Maybe uh, maybe take up the six pound the six month offer and have a wee taste. If uh, you have subscribed but you think others might enjoy it, then please spread the word. But yeah, 
Other than that, thank you very much, James. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening, subscribing, supporting, engaging, watching, etc., etc. We'll be back later on in the week. Not exactly sure when. We have uh, we're kind of all over the place this week due to the build up to the Scottish Cup semi final, but we will be back at some point. Uh, until then, have a good week and goodbye. Bye.